initiating moisture. Today, the Mega Meaty Men Man scientists found within Moist Meter Laboratories go where no scientists have ever dared go before and have taken the Moist Meter where no man, woman, nor beast thought possible. We're taking the Moist Meter to the incredible, wonderful world of big tittied anime goth girlfriends anime. Today, we're going to be looking at Steins Gate Zero. I'm a huge fucking Steins Gate fan. I loved the anime, and I even played the, the game back when it was on the Xbox 360 arcade. I thought it was going to be like one of those hentai games where there's like a lot of vagina and ass and stuff. So I played the game with my dick in my hand, but by the time I finished the game, I had my heart in my hand. My dick in my heart. It was such a goddamn great game, and the anime was just as good. And I was super excited for Steins Gate Zero, and I'm super happy to say Steins Gate Zero is fucking great too. I don't think it's better than Steins Gate but I think it is very, very good still, on the same level. It earns the right to be called Steins Gate, with a zero at the end of it. Now, this story takes place where Steins Gate kind of, right before it ended, where the world, the timeline gets divided. Uh, Okabe, after failing to save everyone and reach Steins Gate, does not try again, and he throws in the towel. That's the timeline where this one takes place, the beta one. And it's a really dark timeline, and I know kind of saying that's a little bit of a spoiler for some people, but you can't watch Steins Gate Zero if you haven't seen Steins Gate. It's not worth it. You're not going to understand anything in Steins Gate Zero that happens because they don't explain shit. They expect you to know everything. They expect you to pass the test on Steins Gate lore at the end of the fucking show. You have to watch Steins Gate Zero having freshly watched Steins Gate and have like the goddamn Omnicron of Steins Gate lore open in front of you to piece together everything that happens in the first 10 episodes of the, the sequel here, which isn't really a sequel. But anyway, it takes place in a darker timeline, which is the beta one. And it really isn't afraid to get dark. There's a lot of stuff in here where it's very, you know, it's sad. There's nothing overly dark. It's not like there's someone who snaps a dog's neck, drinks its blood, and then pees on a, an innocent old man or anything. There's nothing like shockingly dark or weird, but it just toys with some really dark themes, such as how many times can you fail and see something horrific before it breaks you and you give up? And just a lot of things, mainly circling around despair and throwing in the towel. And I like that they play with that. It's nothing new, but I think Steins Gate Zero does it really well. And it gives you nothing but likable characters. There's no characters in this show that I think aren't good, or at least well-rounded. I think they're all interesting, except for one. There's one professor... I don't want to spoil anything, but she's a very two-dimensional, flat fucking board of a character that is really only there to be like a caricature of a bad villain, like a James Bond or like even Austin Powers level villain type deal. So I thought she was kind of weak, but other than that, it's nothing but great characters across the board. And it's visually, it's fucking great. I love the visuals in Steins Gate. I'm a huge fan of the whole theme of time traveling, and they play with it really well. Now let me talk about some of the cons, and there are quite a few that I'd like to talk about. The first 10 or so episodes are extremely convoluted. There's so many moving parts here and so much going on, and that you kind of expect it with time travel because everything gets messy there. But here, it's it's overwhelmingly so. So much so where you're going to start, like, you're going to go to a fucking whiteboard and start writing down notes and then connecting arrows and shit, and it just gets hard to follow and you get lost, which isn't really a positive. It all starts to piece itself together and wrap itself up for a really satisfying conclusion at the end, but getting there, is, it's a fucking mind-boggling ride in not a very good way. Another thing that I want to point out is these people fucking love the party. In this show, they throw a party every two episodes. They party anytime one of them farts. They celebrate. There's a lot of fucking parties in here. I'm not talking frat parties. I'm talking like your mom and her friend's book, book club level parties where there's little hors d'oeuvres and shit. Very tame parties. Nothing wild. No one twirling bras over their heads and going wild and peeing on tables. But that's not a complaint. That's just something I thought I'd point out. The only main complaint I have is the convoluted storyline. And the only other complaint past that is the action is really, it, it's bad. Like when there's an action scene with guns or fighting, it's laughable. It's like a YouTube animation. I don't know what happened there. But it doesn't seem like they had much of a budget to pull off action shots because it's clunky. There's there's a lot of a lot of shit wrong with the action. But it's not like this show is about blood, titties, and rock and roll. It's not that kind of anime. So it's not a whole lot of action here in the first place. But when it is here, it's it's just not good. 
But I just don't have a whole lot of complaints about this show. I really don't. I think it's a very fucking good anime. But it's something you should never watch unless you've seen Steins Gate recently. Because you're going to need to brush up on your fucking information to keep up. It, it's really, it's worth it though. If you've seen Steins Gate, definitely got to see Steins Gate Zero. It's, it didn't disappoint. Not at all. Let's plug this shit into the moist meter. I'm giving Steins Gate Zero a fat fucking 80% because it's fucking great. It is a really good show with some shortcomings, unfortunately, like I mentioned. I feel like they could have done better with laying out the plot in the beginning so it didn't confuse the shit out of anyone who watches it. But other than that, and the action, obviously, other than that, though, it's it's really good. It's it's a watertight, fun plot, and I love the way that they reintroduce characters, and then at the end, you know, towards the end, they start to piece together everything that happens in Stein's Gate. Plus, throughout Steins Gate Zero, it's just, it's fucking great, and I can't recommend it enough if you've already seen Steins Gate, and if you haven't, definitely check that out, and then Steins Gate Zero, it's fucking good. See ya.